Welcome back, welcome back. I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be playing another standard 2020 or rotation proof deck. Uh, this one actually featuring some cards from Throne of Eldraine that we can play because of the Brawl event. And this is a budget deck, no rares, no mythics, all commons and uncommons, and it is a return to mono blue tempo. So, mono blue tempo, you know, Tempest de Jin, um, uh, Curious Obsession, counter everything you play, attack in, just a really annoying deck to play against. Uh, it was a very decisive, uh, divisive deck in terms of people either loving or hating it. Um, and it is a very f budget friendly deck. So, this deck here is looking to play as much as possible around that similar vein. Um, Tempest Vision and Curious Obsession are two major cards we're losing out in the deck archetype. And it was kind of the engine of the deck. But we're looking to see how this kind of fares. Uh, we played a similar variation a couple times in a previous stream, so just wanted to, as much as possible, mirror that deck. Um, so the deck itself, one drops, you got Pteromander. Uh, so the one mana that can become a five, five. Uh, you have Spectral Sailor, which is card draw. Um, and is both like, so this comes down one, this can flash in on one in case we have counters. Four unsummons as the pseudo removal or tempo play of the deck. Then similar to other uh, counter based decks, you have Brineborn Cutthroat that if you can get down and protect, it grows quite large and that's a way you can close out the game quickly. Uh, Fairy Duelist is another flash threat. It's a two mana one two flyer that can screw up the combat math. So similar to um, but a Merfolk Trickster, so not necessarily the tap, but can kind of screw up the combat math for uh, attacking. We have Fairy Vandal, so this is a new card from uh, Throne of Eldraine. So this is a 2 mana 1 2 flash flyer, and whenever you draw the second card each turn, you put a 1 1 counter on Fairy Vandal. So there's a number of ways we can draw multiple cards per turn. Uh, Spectral Sailor is one of them. Uh, we have Winged Words, is another way to draw some cards. Um, so that's pretty much our engine there. Um, so another card like uh, we can probably play Opt in this deck might be something of interest. Uh, but we're gonna try this version out first. So Lazatep's plating is basically the dive down in this deck. So uh, the player and your permanents you control gain hexproof to end a turn. So this will protect from any sort of re removal spell. It also has the upside of a mass one, which creates a creature. Um, so this is two mana versus one. So it's something to keep in mind with dive down. Also, Dive Down made the toughness of the creature higher, so it's a way to also use as a combat truck to block. Uh, we have counters coming in with Negate, Quench, and Sinister Sabotage, so that's how we kind of stop the opponent from doing what they want to do. And then Cloud Kin Seer is a way to draw cards, and Winged Words, uh, all our creatures fly, uh, except Brineborn, uh, so it's an easy way for two mana to draw two cards. Um, so the deck itself, we're playing best of one, it's a good tempo style deck, 20 lines to come up, nice and clean. Uh, so we'll run it through there. Um, so I'm actually going to be playing some ranked uh, version. So I got to diamond, we were at gold or uh, platinum one, so I didn't want to quite play janky brews and then fall down. Uh, so we will play some ranked versions. So it's pretty much just mono red I've been playing and then Golos decks. So it's pretty much all this queue's been. Uh, I got the loss from last night. It's very hard to find to rank up in this. So it's best of one with the variants, and then you're playing new brews, which are untested. So like mono red cavalcade is a very punishing deck if you're not doing something immediately. But we'll play it out and see how it goes. Um, so this deck here, uh, I'll have it up on Aether Hub with the deck list. Uh, so the way you can search for the throne cards is you have to switch your deck style to standard 2020. It's the only way it'll show up immediately. Uh, but you can play from there. I wanted to present some budget options as we do a lot on the channel. Um, you can see from past seasons, there's a lot of videos. So I want to get back to that. Now that we're getting more and more cards spoiled, um, we can go from there. Uh, so this turn, we're just going to pass with the mana up. Uh, we can uh, flash in the sailor and then go from there. Uh, so as we wait for the opponent, uh, to give you an idea, uh, with the channel, once Throne comes out, we will do a number of budget build series. Um, so I'm probably going to start brewing a couple Knights decks, 
Uh, I did the blue white prison deck with Narset and Folio Phages. Posted on Instagram. I'm waiting for Aether Hub on Friday to put up all the decks so I can start posting them there. So check out Aether Hub for all my brews. Um, if you're interested for new standard, if there's any decks you want to see out of the new set, uh, Mono Green Stompy is another deck that I'm interested in playing. Um, so we don't have a counter here, so I don't want to lead out. If this is Gates, they can do Gates Ablaze and wipe our board. Um, so let's just do this right now. Just attack him. Um, so we can unsummon one of our creatures if need be. Um, yeah, so if there's any decks you want to see, drop a comment in the YouTube video. And as we go into the new standard, uh, we put in out a lot of content. The best way to get notified when we go live is to follow on Twitch or to subscribe on YouTube. Both are free and easy ways to support the channel. Uh, so this is Elementals. fine so with this deck you do need to kind of temple them so they're gonna get another card draw here but we're trying to push them behind on card advantage so now they actually have to discard so the card that they drew ends up being something they potentially have to discard so they got rid of scorcher so the decision here is we can quench what comes down or we can play cow skin and make these bigger um, I think it might be important just from a tempo play just to cut them off of this resource. Once we start getting the other land, we can start just drawing cards with Spectral Sailor. But I think as long as we keep them off the board, especially if they drop something like Omnath, yeah. So being able to quench here is really good. That stops them from getting bigger spells. So now we have one summon. I think we're just gonna go again, same idea. Maybe made sense that turn with Cloudkin, but I can play in here. Protect my spell if they had like an Omnath. So this looks like Teamer Field Elementals. So same idea, bounce this back. Then we get to use our, all our mana here. We get to use the plating. We get a 1-1. One, one. So that gets us our second card for the turn. And we got a Sailor to come down too. This card is going to be really good in these like uh, tempo style decks. So we pretty much have him dead there. Omnath kills one thing, but we just swarm them anyways. So they go Lava Coil, that's fine. Because we can also just draw a card next turn to make this bigger. The ground's not really a concern. Flash that in, and we should have the match. This makes it bigger. And then we can take them out. So it's Xaxes. One done. So opponent's mana base was a little budgety, but... So even though we gave them the multiple card draws with their Cloudkin, we are able to just tempo them out. Uh, hey Quantum, how's it going tonight? Uh, the important thing with this deck, as much as possible to win, is to be lucky and be on the draw. I'm oh, sorry, on the play. Uh, getting ahead, so your opponent goes first. This ends a little bit slower, but in theory what we can do is Brineborn down and uh, sabotage afterwards. So this hand's gonna be very contingent on if our opponent's uh, playing a slower deck or not. Another deck I've been seeing quite a bit of is a blue-red control deck that plays um, the dino, I forget its name, the dinosaur that when it 
uh, enters another creature enters the battlefield, they take two damage, and Kefnet is kind of you turn three Kefnet, and then you just play a bunch of disruption. That deck looked pretty sweet as well. Okay, so they could have shock here. They may because they're holding priority. Okay, so now we're good here. So now we just counter whatever the opponent does. So we can just protect. We got sabotage and then eventually plating. So here I'm going to use the plating because we can protect. It also puts on another power here. And because it's best of one, they're not going to be playing like Veil vale of Summer. And that time locks them for the turn. Another sabotage, so it's two turns worth of the opponents not playing anything. Uh, was Torben the? Um, it's like the f one red, red, red. Uh, if a red source deals damage, it deals an extra two. I think that was the one I saw today. I saw the mono white one. Yeah, that one looks pretty sweet. And uh, I'm gonna sabotage here. They're main boarding Veil of Summer. Wow. Wow, okay. What are you playing that you're main boarding Veil of Summer? Okay, so here we're gonna Spectral Sailor and hold up Sabotage. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. And, uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this deck can't beat uh, Resolved Mid-Mizzet. It turns out if your entire deck's based on uh, X1s, that you lose terribly. And when all the cards in our hand draw cards, but we can't play. Um, so here, I'm just going to poke in. Probably should have just attacked with that. Um, I need to try to get enough stuff in my... Yeah, we lost this. Uh, I got unsummoned, so I can unsummon it on end step. And then hold up plating potentially to protect. Yeah, I can't be mad. This is how I bet my opponent a lot. We, we played against this deck with Teamer Reclamation and I had Niv out. I love me some Niv. Anyone who's willing to jam it, I just can't believe they're playing Veil of Summer main. That is such a fringe sideboard card. They actually can't cast Niv this turn, so we're just going to do this now. It saves us 5 damage. Yeah, Thottery, but like, Esper hasn't even been that much. The mana base is really bad. Like that doesn't help against like this mat this deck's ma hardest matchup is I guess mono red cavalcade like if you can get to the late game you you win. Want to hit a land here? We do have two dr looks at the draw. Okay, perfect. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, they're likely, and then they can radical idea. Because the thing is, even with Lazatefs, so I think we just do this. Okay, we have Sailor too. Sailor is a way we can flash in after, and then protect it potentially. 
I don't think we could go with the mill plan here. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so we have Pateramander and we have five mana. We have five, so this costs three. So we can also protect it with Reaving. So now it kind of gets into the chicken and egg. Yeah, the overlay works, but because the cards right now, the Vandal's not on. Um, it doesn't work with um, the new this particular deck. No, so timing wise, they're gonna cast that, and then I can last step reaving. It's a weird way with the stack, but. Let's put another trigger on the stack. I think we're dead regardless. You know what, if the opponent sleeves up Nico or uh, Niv, we give it to them. So this is pretty much how this event goes. You win one, you lose one, and you don't actually rank up anything. Uh, we'll run it another one, see how it goes. This, they still haven't fixed this overlay. Every single time you play like a game, you have to like re-register everything. Welcome to those tuning in. We are playing a completely common and uncommon uh, deck. It is a mono blue tempo list looking to play a bunch of cheap one drop flyers with disruption. We are playing Fairy Vandal which is a new card from Throne of Eldraine. Uh, you can play it if you got it for part of the Brawl event. Uh, just if you're trying to look it for it in your list it can only be found uh, if you switch your drop down for deck selection to standard 2020. So gutter bones, this could be Rakdos aggro. Um, I think we do sailor on end step. And then winged words. Opponent can go probably rather face mono black. I tried brewing a mono black deck, but I feel like it needs a bunch of the cards from the new set. This is Rakdos. Rakdos is probably a tough matchup. They have a lot of ways to deal incidental damage, and the recursion is tough. Also, play draw situation makes a difference here. Oh, that was premature. They have shock. Yep, I screwed that up. That doesn't matter, they would have shocked anyways. So I can go Cloudkin, they have another land. This deck also gets better with a sideboard. You can tailor with like um, either more specific counters. Yeah, this. So the notable way, like this deck gets better by playing the blue white flyers version but if you're looking for like a budget version this is a good way to get started like how many clicks do i have to do to just play a deck again but you'd get like uh aether gust to blound some stuff uh you can probably play a couple other tools there's also like a couple new mono blue tools coming out so sounds pretty good you got two flash threats Might be feather. Yes, this is feather. Yeah, the consecutive wins is a little annoying. Okay, so we're gonna play fairy vandal here, and then play cloudkin. 
can go Feather this turn. Tajik. Um. So they mentor there, which is tough. So we do this so they don't get the mentor trigger on Arcanist. Uh, so they can attack in. So I'm not blocking with Sailor, so I will attack in. We need to just kind of hold this out. We could flash this in and double block, but I don't feel like that's a winning play. They do have an opening for removal. If they have it. Something like Shock's bad. will raise the alarm. Well, that's actually pretty good. Um, so here, let's just go like this. Puts a counter on it. I think we just need to try to go as wide as possible. I'm gonna throw this in front of Tajik if they attack with it. This attacks and gets the Raise the Alarm tokens. It's actually a pretty interesting deck. We haven't played Boros at all. I think that's uh, the next one we gotta do. Can gain First Strike to end a turn. So they need to decide. If they do this, then they don't get the uh, to play another spell. So they they're unlikely to have something for one mana, or they just play Venerated Loxodon and smash our face. So a little rough. So can't even make that big enough to block anything profitably. Yeah, it's like a Boros tokens deck. We need to shut this down. Probably too far behind this one. This deck's hard, like, because you don't have the Jin that can just close out the game quickly. It's a bit harder to catch up with this deck. Like we saw that first game, we got under the opponent, they didn't play a single spell, but as soon as they have somewhat of an aggressive start, the creatures don't scale as well. Um, so this hand here, it's very aggressive. We are on the play, so probably keep it. Go Brineborn, Brineborn. Fairy Duelist. Seeing a Tranquil Grove means Teferi. Yeah. Um, 
like the green green splash, you get wolf. Okay, so Donna Hope, this is a blue-white control deck of some sort. So I'll just play that out. So I'd like to see a counter spell. This could be Jeskai control. Brineborn. So we have Cloudkin. Um, I think we just passed the turn. Hey, Metalik, what'd you think of those decks? Uh, let's just do this. Nice. Did you make any changes to the decks, or did you just play them as is? Lazatev's plating has actually been pretty good. Got second plating. If you can, if you have some time, um, on like the Aether Hub deck page, if you can just highlight some of the changes, because I know a lot of people leverage it. So like I play maybe five, ten games on the channel with it. Uh, we're just going to do this again to protect our creatures from the Teferi Bounce. Um, yeah, so this game we were able to get on there and we were able to win. Um, yeah, on Aether Hub, you can just drop a couple comments as to what you changed, because other people leverage off it, so it helps for brewing. Uh, Aetherhub.com. So for basically where the deck lists are, like the link that I have in the deck description, it takes you to a site called Aetherhub. That's where I post all the deck lists, and you can just post comments there. Or even if you just drop it in the YouTube video that you found, like wherever you're finding the deck list, it just helps so I can make some revisions. I like w when we crowdsource brewing, especially for the new set. Uh, let's play some Momir. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with how Momir works, basically each turn you can play a land, you can pay X mana and you randomly get a card, uh, like a creature card from a deck. So it's usually like a RNG style thing. Uh, there's some new cards that were never on Arena before that apparently are showing up, like Bringer, the Bringer series, so like... Um, Generally, these matchups are whoever gets uh, Zakama first. That's it. Gisha? Yeah, Zakama's the nine mana one. Being on the play helps. So, usually, the strategies you want to wait till like three mana plus. Because you have to discard a card in order to do it, so you want to hit your line drops. So, one three is not that big of a clock, so we'll probably wait a turn. Because we want to be able to hit ma uh, land drops and consistently play out threats. This doesn't do much. So I think now we start crafting. Got a lot of planes, so we'll discard one of those. Mentor is not bad, we can trade at the worst. A flyer is pretty good just from an evasion standpoint. Four two menace is pretty good. This is just like a very high variance format. Uh, let's go another plane since we have so many. Oh, sweet, we got Shalai. Um, yeah, the one with the Planeswalkers was weird. Basically, like, if you got Sorin, or Sarkin, or, like, Zaheli or Liliana. Alright. That is, uh, this guy's getting all Menace cards. So we need a second creature here. Uh, 
What are you? You're a 4 or 5 hex proof. So we can block here. Probably the case. Oh, you have death touch. Ah, they're getting all the death touch stuff. I want to keep Shalai. Yeah, I just saw it today. It just came out. This is another format where play draw is good. Each creature you control, pretty much dead here. If they attack, menace, menace, we can't block. Thankfully this format's pretty cheap, so... We also only get two wins, or two games. So hopefully on the draw, or sorry, on the play. I keep messing that up today. On the play, that's where we want to be. All right, island say go. So still think we go three drop. The cards get a lot better there. Uh, we'll get rid of a mountain. Ooh, Overgrowth Elemental is pretty cool if we get a lot. Yeah, they're fine. It's just like sometimes your opponent will get like a crazy card and you'll get like a 1-2. Like a 3-2 Vigilance. We got Wild Growth. Pretty even. Like obviously ours has upside if we could ever hit another Whoa. Elemental. But like here. So when it attacks, if you control Chandra Planeswalker. So like we paid four mana for this useless, this useless turd. Um, so Overgrowth has upside. This, we're never gonna hit a Chandra's Planeswalker, so no point in reaching there. Three, four. So like here, I'd want like a, a Doom Whisper would be awesome. Actually, it's not bad. Five, five Trampler. Uh, you can attack before or after, but in this case, because I'm kind of behind on board, pay two life, gains flying in the turn, gains vigilance. That is actually quite terrifying. Um, so like here, I don't quite know what I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna offer them if they wanna attack a uh, block with both. Yeah, so getting rid of this glorifier is the right call. We gain some life. This does not, you see, like, in this deck, this does nothing. Like, we can draw some cards, but I guess we can block. Uh, whenever another creature you control dies, we gain life. Yeah, like, here, this card's great because they got a draw out of it. Um, I can double block. I think we just take the damage. It could be anything, even a boat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this is a new throne card, Beanstalk Giant. We have a seven, seven, so. Hello, how you doing? They have, it can block two creatures. 
Uh, so let's go eight gear. See, like this too. Like we get a seven seven. It's fringe, but it doesn't do much. So now the opponent's got the mirror breaker. I think full raise. Oh! <laughs> There's Gristle Breath in this deck? Oh. Oh, hello. I did not know Gristle Brand was a thing. Yeah, so. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Gristlebrand, um, in any format that you can play a reanimator deck, Gristlebrand is the card you get. There is no fair way to play Gristlebrand. It reads, do whatever you want, draw as many cards as you want, win the game. So this is some of the bringer. So these are some of the new cards they added in. Uh, part of the reason was uh, Gishoth. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Zakama was basically the only 9 drop. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we have 10. This is a good way to see how many cards we have. So we'll attack in for 7. Game 7. I don't know what's a 10 drop, but we shall see. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we won. We have a new strategy. Uh, we're going Gristlebrand into Ulamog Exile 20. Now I just kind of want to see what's around. Ginger's Axis. <laughs> At the beginning of your end step draw, each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7. So we have Gristlebrand. And a ginger taxis. They can draw seven, that's fine. They also mill twenty, so that could kind of lose them the game on the spot. Let's see what's 11. You never know. Is there no 11 drop? Oh, that's stupid. So they need to put some blocks on. That's stupid. Why is there no... Eleven drop. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the, the twins. So it makes us discard. But we can draw seven on the pan. Can you multiple per turn? Yes, you can. So we probably should have just done a couple there. A five and a six drop. Yeah, it's not a tap. It's just pay X, discard a card. Opponent also paid 11 and got nothing. So they did not learn from our mistake. Opponents GG, pretty much, yeah, cute, cool. well I don't think I'm going to top Grizzlebrand into Ulamog, uh, that was the highlight of my night, um, so I'm going to wrap this up now, we played some mono blue budget, let me know what you think of that deck there, um, I'll save this league and we'll 
kind of play it at the end of each video. Uh, I'll try to get a couple out tomorrow. Um, my dog's barking at me in the back. I don't know if you can hear her. She wants to go outside and play. So I'm going to go do that. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And as always, if you missed any of my content, you can catch it on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and have a great night.